This week I learned that apparently I need to change this from a book channel to an Avatar fan channel. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update here about halfway through February, and uh, I'm a little ahead of my schedule reading-wise, but, you know, when it comes to whole life, I think I'm always going to be behind schedule in that regard. But, guys, let's go ahead and dip into what am I reading. I've continued with Shogun. I say across about the halfway point. I think I'm on chapter, like, 39 or 40, going to chapter 46, which will be the end of uh, part three in here, and that'll be it until uh, March. But uh, I feel like I'm learning more about the Japanese language than I ever thought that I would. You know, we had uh, you know we had to take two years of uh, foreign language, and that's how it kind of works here in the states. Living in Texas, which is you know a stone's throw away from Mexico, I feel like uh, yeah, taking Spanish is obviously a great advantage here, especially when it comes to like looking for employment, things like that. Anyone that's bilingual, because there's so many Spanish-speaking people here, that it makes a lot of sense to do that. So, uh, you know, we, we were offered, you know, J Japanese in high school and things like that. But, uh, yeah, I never thought that I would be learning uh, while I'm reading this book as much as I have. So, like I said, uh, part one and two, I felt like I was learning a lot about the, the Spanish and Portuguese conflict and how that impacted Japan. And now I'm learning a little bit about the Japanese language. Uh, Blackthorn has been giving a time limit uh, of time he has to learn the Japanese language. But uh, some very interesting things are happening in that book. And like I said, even watching the miniseries, the 1980 miniseries, and feeling like, oh, okay, well, you know everything. No, there's so much, so many questions I actually had about the miniseries have been being answered while I'm reading this. And it's uh, it's quite good, especially during a specific seppuku scene. Very, very great stuff. So uh, yeah, I'll be finishing that up probably this week. And I'll uh, be looking forward to not only the new series premiering on FX here very, very soon, but of course, the conclusion in March. Uh, I started working on Trials of Empire by Richard Swan's the final book in The Empire of the Wolf. Kind of mixed on it. I felt like it started kind of slow. And I don't mean it's like slow as in like, look, there was stuff happening. There was action and things like that. But it kind of felt like they were going... It's like I was playing a Final Fantasy game and I was doing like side quest to side quest to side quest. And I'm like... Can we get back to the main quest? But I feel like it's it's actually picked up now. I say I'm about two thirds through it. I think with me is I appreciate that Richard's going for what he's going for. Yeah, you know, I feel like he has very much took that step into horror fantasy, which I said is a genre I didn't know I needed until I got it. And I, I think he does that stuff really great. The gore is outrageous. You know, like the full on like nightmare fuel scenes, impressive. It's impressive writing. Does very much have some eldritch Lovecraftian kind of vibes to it there. And I admire that stuff. I think I just like that first book so much. It was unlike anything I'd ever read in fantasy. It really just felt like a full on murder mystery. And I really liked that. Almost like it was almost like a medieval kind of Sherlock Holmes, where, you know, Sherlock is being told from the point of view of Watson. You know, here we have Conrad being told from the point of view of Helena. And I really, really liked that vibe. So I think maybe. Uh, it's like where the series started and where it is now is two very, very different things. And while I like both, I really like the way it began. So I, I, I do feel like it's a great series and I'm going to recommend it always to everybody. But I will say it does feel like to me, book one better than book two, book two better than book three. But I do like where it is headed. And when you're talking about a trilogy, guys, someone has to take that bottom spot. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad book. So I want to make sure that I'm not I'm not coming across that way. I do like it, and I, and I appreciate where he's went. I admire Richard for going for what he's going for. He's doing it really well. He's pulling it off great. And I feel like that final conflict is going to be just awesome. That's really building to, because I'm finally getting that huge battle that I've kind of been waiting for this entire series. But I, I do think that uh, Justice of Kings was a little bit more special to me in that regard that it felt like something I'd never really read in fantasy before. And I know that it, he didn't probably create that, but it's just it's the first my ex first experience with that. And I think that's why I kind of lean that way. Whereas this just feels like, I don't know, something completely different. Book one to book three, it feels uh, kind of different. So I, I almost feel like, uh, I don't know, maybe this should have been four books, maybe five books to kind of spread this out a little bit. Because I do feel like making that leap from book one to book three, it, it kind of feels, I, like I said, I feel like they're doing kind of side questy stuff. But now it's, it's also kind of feeling kind of rushed, which I... I know I sound like I'm trying to have my cake and eat it too, but you know, I like cake. You know, who doesn't? So uh, that that might be it. But uh, I'll report on that next week when I do finish it. Again, I am going to recommend the series. I'm going to recommend all three books. I'm going to recommend Trials of Empire. I just think that the series kind of headed in a direction that uh, while I like it, I didn't love it because I did really truly love 
that original story. How about what am I going to read? Well, obviously, I've still got quite a bit to go on Shogun. I've uh, got a little bit left. I'll finish Trials of Empire this week, so I'll keep working on those two. Then the only thing I've got left for February, guys, is uh, Stones of Light. That's book two in the Threadlight series by Zach Argyle. I got that beautiful, beautiful Kickstarter edition, which I'm excited to get back to reading out of because it's just a great experience with the art and just the whole aesthetic and feel of that book. It really is just a beautiful, beautiful edition, which I see that just about everybody's got now. And there's been lots of unboxings and lots of Instagram reels and things about that. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful edition. And I'm interested to see where that story does go because a lot of people have told me that book one, just okay. Book two and three, excellent. Depending on how you feel about the ending, of course. But I think that's every series. People's going to be like, well, it depends on how you feel about the ending. But I'm excited to continue with that. But that's really all I got. If I finish early, uh, will I start dipping into my March books? If I do, it's going to be Priest of Lies uh, because I love Priest of Bones so much. And I don't know if I'm going to do one a month for that. I enjoyed that so much. And those are such short reads. I might actually just move those up to March. I don't know. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do that. Because I said I was just going to continue this year with you know book one and then kind of see where I want to go with the rest of the series. And sometimes I don't like doing, I'm going to do one per month because I realize, hey, you're doing that thing that you said you didn't want to do where you start four or five new book ones. <laughs> and that doesn't usually end well because something doesn't ever get finished. So uh, I might actually move that one a little forward. And then when I'm done with that, maybe then I'll get back to the Larry Correa uh, Saga, The Forgotten Warrior books, which I also like that book one very much as well. And I do have some new book ones that I'm starting in March. So I feel like I, I need to reel it in a little bit and maybe wrap up some of these series. Kind of do like I did with Nevernight by Jay Kristoff, where I read that whole trilogy in a month. Maybe I'll read uh, the, the pre-series, uh, the War for the Rose Throne, you know, two, three, and four. All, I don't know. I'm still, these things are still up for debate. I don't have to make, put out my March TBR video yet. So I've got time to kind of decide as we go. How about this week on the channel? Uh, you guys, I've told you that the home renovations have been a trip. Uh, you know, last weekend they knocked our power out. That's why I had to do this video from my phone last week. And it was mixed results on that. But uh, with this, it's just, it's, you knew you're having your kitchen knocked out. It's going to be very inconvenient. But you know, the thing is, is like, it takes a lot longer than people think. I mean, a lot of times people are like, oh, well, yeah, I'm surprised they got the cabinets and everything done. Because, I mean, they really did a week, you know, everything torn down the studs and they got the cabinets up and all that. But then you have to have them come out and measure for your countertops. And then those countertops have to be custom made. And that takes good, you know, one and a half to two weeks. So you never realize how much you need a sink and a countertop until you don't have it. You know, of course, you're like, of course, I don't think I can get by without that. But go without it for a month and see how rough things are. So that's just obviously been playing into a lot of my availability. Uh, I did have a trip to Sam Houston State this weekend, That was, or this week, that was the college that I went to. You guys don't know, I went back to college uh, at 37 years old. I was lucky enough after two years to apply for a scholarship to Sam Houston and did get it. And they have this, this program there now, Sam Houston uh, Smith Hudson Scholars. Uh, it's part of the business branch. And they like uh, the alumni of that to come back and talk to some of the younger uh, the people, because the program's still going. So some of the younger people that are getting into that, not only just younger, because I felt like, oh, am I going to be like the, hey, it's never too late age representative? But uh, you know, there were people that are older than me. It's not that kind of program. It really is for all walks of life. And I think that that is actually encouraging to hear it, you know, from all ages. So they'd like us to come and talk to some of the new recruits, basically, let, let them know about the program and things like that. So it was always a lot of fun and seeing some people that I hadn't seen in a few years. It was the first time I'd been back on campus since before the virus shall not be named, you know, because I graduated that year. We didn't, actually, we didn't actually have a graduation. We got a, hey, we'll mail your your, your, your diploma to you, you know, but uh, it's uh, it was it was a fun trip. Nice uh, time to reminisce and uh, and obviously encourage some of those others uh, that is a great program. And uh, I'm just happy to be a part of it. And I got this nice new coffee mug. So, you know, hey, that's cool. They also got a nice uh, Stanley, uh, the little little. What do they call them? They call it, I don't want to say a Stanley Cup because that's like the, the trophy you get for winning the NHL championship. But it, it's made by Stanley and it is the cup that you drink out of. I don't know. It's really cool. It's got the it's got the Smith Hudson uh, Scholar logo on it. Uh, book haul for January 2024. I did get that one out this week. Uh, always a great time being able to say thank you and give back to uh, people who have been kind enough to send me something. I got to talk about this chair, which I am just loving. I love it so much. Uh, it's pretty much replaced because when I read hardcovers, you know, that could be difficult sometimes to read like in bed or in a chair. I like to read those at my desk. So I've been reading Shogun. My, I did Blackwater strictly from this chair because I have this ottoman here that I can kind of use to put the, put the book on if I want to kind of lean forward and then go back. 
took a nap in this chair. This is just a great chair. I love it. It's becoming like my new recliner when I want to like not be around children, which, you know, some weeks more than others. Or when you don't have certain parts of your house working, you kind of want a little escape. So it's nice. So I got to talk about that chair, which I did like. Uh, until the until the multiverse returned to that to do the sun dog, which is kind of like the redheaded stepchild of Four Past Midnight, the book that everyone just kind of, if you're comparing it to different seasons, it's the breathing method of that book, where it's the one that just kind of seems to be forgotten about, not many people talk about, or they just flat out didn't like. And uh, yeah, I'm going to make sure that I did finally wrap up Four Past Midnight. Two and a half years it took me to review all of Four Past Midnight, but I'm glad that it's in the books now, and I get to move on to some of those Richard Bachman stories here, starting with Long Walk next month. Very, very exciting times guys i can't wait to talk about the long walk because that is one of my favorite stephen king stories and i can't wait to tell you why it's really amazing he was a teenager when he wrote that story how about some next week plans guys i got a couple of things it's going to be kind of a, a week of some some live streams i kind of had uh, you know some scheduling things some of these people are in different parts of the globe than i am so we have to work with time zones and stuff you kind of just schedule something for when everybody can make it so i, I usually try to space out my live streams never have them on back-to-back -back nights or even in the same week this week it's gonna be a little different uh thursday night i'm gonna be talking uh, one piece with Murphy Napier, uh, Philip, and of course, Alan from Libraries Alexandria, as Philip has started reading One Piece, and we're going to be having discussions for several of those. I think we're going to kind of be alternating whose channel it's going to be on. But the first introduction episode, where we'll be talking about the first arc of the series, will be this Thursday night. Thursday night. So I hope you guys are, if you are into One Piece, or if you haven't gotten into One Piece, you can read those first seven issues really, really quick, I think, or chapters, rather. The first seven chapters of One Piece really, really quick, if you want to kind of get in there, and we're going to kind of talk about what we thought about it. And I'm sure that Philip will have some philosophical message that he brings that I totally miss in those first seven chapters, but uh, can't wait to do that and uh, get to talk to Murphy about it. Because I know that when I first started talking about One Piece, a lot of people were like, you need to have a, a collaboration with Murphy. So finally... That'll be happening this week. And then on Friday night, uh, actually not Friday night, Friday during the day, because two of the participants are uh, you know across the ocean here, uh, we'll be talking about the value of novellas to readers and authors, of course. And so I will be having three authors on with me that actually have written novellas in their ongoing series. It's going to be Shauna Lawless. This is going to be uh, Ryan Cahill. And it's going to be Christopher Rocchio. Uh, and uh, I can't wait to see what they do bring to the conversation. I'm sure we'll talk about more than just novellas. I got three really, really talented authors on the channel. I want to make sure I pick their brain on all sorts of things. But I hope you guys will join that conversation. If anything, you should join that conversation just to listen to uh, to Ryan and Shauna's accents because, you know, they're... I was going to call the super, super sexy accent edition, but, you know, yeah, just my regular voice. And Christopher, I mean... Maybe his voice is, he has an accent for some, but to me, it just sounds normal, you know? And <laughs> American, I guess, is normal. You know, my ignorance is showing through a bit there, but uh, great accents all around. And uh, I'm excited to talk to those fine, fine people because uh, I think it can be a conversation that goes in many a direction, but uh, we'll see. I, I think I might put together a Why You Should Read. I, just, I haven't done a Why You Should Read since I did Narnia a few months back. So I feel like I'm due for a Why You Should Read as far as what it's going to be, I have no idea. I have no idea. So I might have to actually think about that, put that together here pretty soon. I keep just looking around at my books. I'm like, what can I do that I haven't already done? Uh, so it should be an interesting week for me creatively to see where I do come through with some of this. But I don't want to leave you guys hanging until Thursday when we have these live streams. So I'll try to get something out probably Tuesday or so if I figure out what I'm going to talk about with this Why You Should Read. But always, this is just going to depend on how these home renovations go because... Uh, we are kind of in a waiting period. We do have another appointment on Monday where they're going to kind of finish the uh, the plumbing and the, uh, and the electric stuff and the gas stuff and all that. And then it's just kind of said, like I said, the, the long wait for the countertops and uh, for them to put our undermounted sink on there. But uh, yeah, I've got a thread on Twitter if you guys want to keep up with the, uh, the home renovation thread where I'm kind of showing step by step with pictures about how it's going. But it's been an experience. It has been an experience. How about some TV and movie talk before I go, guys? A Valentine's tradition. My wife and I have is she doesn't really like to go out on Valentine's because, well, she doesn't like people. Uh, so she doesn't like to go out. Very, very busy night, obviously, on Valentine's. So a tradition that we started, gosh, I want to say back in like 2008 or so, is we just started, how about we watch a classic romance movie? So that means like 1960 or before. And we do, uh, we just, you know, one of us will take turns. One person picks the movie and the other person cooks that year. Well, this year we don't have a kitchen. 
It was her turn to pick the movie, so I just went and got some takeout from Olive Garden, and it worked out fine. But the movie she picked was called The Apartment with Jack Lemmon and uh, Shirley MacLaine from 1960, so it was right there at the deadline. Very, very fun movie, uh, you know, romance-wise. And I say wise because there's something that the character Jack Lemmon does in that movie where he, he just adds the word wise to everything because I guess it makes him sound wise. But I've just been kind of doing that uh, just around the house lately. It's like, you know, hey, I'm reading this book, you know, entertainment-wise and things. But a uh, fun movie, fun movie. I always love going back and watching some of the classics. I love the, the 1960s aesthetic. You know, uh, if you should watch the show Mad Men, like the clothes and stuff, is just so beautiful. And the way they had their lighting in the 1960s in these movies was just just brilliant. Just a brilliant movie. So uh, we've had some misses on these Valentine's movies. We have way more hits than misses. And uh, we both really did enjoy this one uh, uh, quite a bit. So I, I would recommend it for sure. I have been watching Avatar The Last Airbender. Now, people have been telling me to watch this show since, gosh, the mid... 2000s. I don't know. I mean, I, I think for years. I don't even remember when the show came on. I do remember when it first came out and people were real excited about it. And I was like, yeah, I think I just kind of missed the age on that. You know, I'm not really into the Nickelodeon kid stuff anymore. And I feel like this show has been sold so many times. Well, it is a show for kids, you know. And so you get to that age where you're like, ah, you know, I'm already not crazy about animated series and stuff. I respect the hell out of people that are. For me, it's just something about animated series where I can't really binge it. I'll watch two or three episodes, and I'm like, oh, I need like a break or something. Like, I remember I was really excited to watch Archer, and I watched a few episodes, and I was like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm done for now. Uh, and it doesn't testify to the quality of the show. It's just something about me. I'm not really, really wild about it. Well, guys, I watched the first 20 episodes of Avatar in the last week since I talked to you. And uh, we finished book one this morning, and here's the thing is I am absolutely loving it. And everybody tells me that book one, which is season one, for those who don't know, is the worst of the show. So I'm telling you, like, tell me the next two years are even better. This, guys, this has some of the best writing and best character arcs I've seen. It's impressive. And there's some stuff in there. It's like straight nightmare fuel. I'm like, this is a kid's show, huh? I mean, there's part where uh, Aang is talking to the thing that's called like this dealer of faces, full on nightmare. It's like horrific stuff. And I'm like, this is really cool stuff. So I think it has that lightheartedness, almost like Percy Jackson, where you can still enjoy it because, you know, the Avatar is 12 years old. So there is some things I feel like is approachable for kids, but 45-year-old man, and I am loving this. It has some of the best writing. That, I mean, like Some of my favorite fantasy books don't have writing this good. I really do feel like it's that strong. And I do say, you know, kind of take a little bit to give it some time. And everybody kind of was telling me that, you know, just give it some time, give it some time. It's just going to get better. I mean, even the episodes that people are saying that like are some of the worst episodes I've enjoyed. I, there's not there's not one episode where I'm like, oh, I wish I, I, I feel like I wasted my life watching that. But uh, I originally just planned to watch this first season here before the Netflix show started because that's what they're going to be adapting. Uh, I'll keep going for sure. <laughs> I'm definitely, I, I, the way that season one ends, uh, surely, you know, you'll want to continue to season two. But uh, I, I, I'm absolutely just like borderline obsessed with it right now. I, I think this is, again, guys, I know I come to this stuff late. I come to this stuff late and people are like, yeah, I've known about this for decades. You know, that's just, just me. It, it was you guys' persistence that I watched this show. And I just want to make sure that I'm giving you your flowers here. You deserve it. This is all I have heard and more. And I can see why people are just so crazy about this series because it, I really don't think it matters what age you are. Like I said, my kid's already watched it, but he's watching it. Like when I'm watching it, he will come downstairs and watch some with me. And uh, it's just, it's really great. It really is. It just has these amazing, amazing character relationships and arcs. And you just think about watching the growth of these characters is just impressive what they've been able to do just in 20 short, 20 minute episodes, you know? So I'm loving it. I am really, really enjoying it. And you're telling me it only gets better from here. This is going to be one of my favorite series ever, I think. And that's that's amazing. It really, really is. So again, uh, I want to give you guys credit because you're the ones who pushed me uh, to watch this. And I know it has a huge fandom and I'm just glad to call myself a part of it now because I am really, really into it and I can't wait to see where it goes. Something else, guys, you know that I might be into is Dune. And Dune Part 2 is coming out really, really soon. They did have the premiere. Some things are starting to leak out now. And I will just say, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, of course, I'm excited. I'm going to the premiere of it on the 25th, which is like the fan first screening, which is like five days before it releases worldwide. And uh, some of the things I've heard have me a little shook. Honestly, there is a, a very, a very important character in this book that, how do I get around this without spoiling anything? Uh, basically, what I've heard is this character does not have a physical manifestation in this book, and they've completely like removed this character's kind of bits and kind of given them to other people. 
And if that ends up being true, I'm going to be very disappointed. I'm going to be extremely disappointed because for those who have read it, I'm Sorry Grandfather is one of my favorite moments in that book. And if you're actually taking that away, I'm going to be watching it with my arms crossed. I'm going to be very upset about it. And I I don't think that there's any excuse for it. Uh, I really, I'm looking at why, and I'm like, why, why, why change that? It makes no sense. And, it's, and I've heard people like, oh, you can't really, do, why can't you do that? I see no reason why they were able to do it in 1984. Why can't they do it now? You know, so uh, I, again, I don't want to put the cart before the horse. I don't know. This is all speculation. You know, there was a major cast member that was revealed, and I think everybody knows who it's going to be. And I'm just, I'm not thrilled with it if this does turn out to be true. But uh, Chris Verrocchio and I will be doing our spoiler free and our spoiler review that weekend after. So I guess it'll be like March 2nd or 3rd, I think. We'll be doing those reviews and talking about it. And uh, you might actually get to see me and Christopher flipping tables live on a, on a live stream because uh, we will be discussing that. If this does turn out to be true, I'll be very, very sad and very, very disappointed. I think the movie is going to be great overall because I know that Denny B does love the story, but I will really have to question what he was thinking if he removes this specific character from the book. And uh, I'll get more into it into detail when Christopher and I do talk about it. But guys, that was my week. Interesting week all around. Like I said, got about two more weeks without a kitchen. And uh, then hopefully some normalcy can return to the house here. And uh, yeah, the stress levels will go down just a little bit. But guys, I'd be loving to know what you are into this week. What are you watching? What are you reading? What are you listening to? What are you playing? Drop in the comments and let me go, guys. And I will talk to you there.